So let's get started. The first one is this, and it starts with a question. Like when you begin a conversation with somebody that, you know, isn't just an offhand, hey, how's your day? But it, you know, it needs to be engaged. I always start with this. What do you need from me? Do you just need to be heard or are you looking for some feedback? So in other words, I set the ground rules right from the beginning because let's face it, in most situations, especially interpersonal friendships, relationships, most often a person just wants to be heard. They don't want advice. They don't want to know what your thoughts and feelings are. They don't want to be corrected. They just want a listening ear. Now, if they do want advice, I have done a previous video on the three rules to giving advice. I'd encourage you to go watch that one. But that the first step is to find out what are we doing here? Are we just supporting you or are we trying to arrive at an answer? Okay, so that's step number one. What do you need from me? All right, step number two is take notes. I know this sounds crazy and it especially sounds crazy in a relationship, but I do it. I do it with my clients. I do it with anybody. If it's a deep, you know, a, a real connecting emotional conversation, I always take notes. And here's what I'm taking notes. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the facts or what most people would do is, you know, especially if someone wanted to feed back and, and, you know, this was say an argument with your spouse or partner, they're going to write down all the things that they're lying about, or they got this wrong and this wrong. That's, that's not what I'm encouraging you to do. Remember when we're listening to somebody, when we're listening for empathy and in any situation, listening is about getting to know the other person. It's not about us being right. That's the biggest problem is people think I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to find all the flaws in your argument and I'm going to spin them around and show you how you were wrong. That's not listening. That's called an attack. <laughs> okay. And so remember the title of this video is advanced empathetic listening skills. So I'm not here to attack you. I'm not here to win an argument. I'm here to listen which means I'm here to understand how you see the world. As crazy as that may be with you know, your views, which I may find completely outlandish, it doesn't matter. I'm here to learn about you and that's why I take notes. And so the notes I'm looking to take are about the deep emotional experiences they're having. So I'm listening for anything or any type of word that has an emotional impact. For instance, someone says, you know, I'm really frustrated and scared. I don't know what to do. My boss, I just saw this look in his eye and, and then he wants to have a meeting later today. So I don't, I'm not listening about the boss, or, you know, the meeting later today. What I would have written down is I'm scared. I'm uncertain. You know, what did I say? Scared and frustrated. No, I, I don't think I said frustrated. See, I already forgot what I said. That's why. That's why you take notes. They were, you know, this person was scared. They're concerned about the meeting later. They're, you know, there's trepidation. And so I might add in words that they didn't use, but what I'm listening for is the emotional content of what they're saying, not the factual content of the story. I'm here for empathy and understanding. Whenever we, we want to understand somebody, whenever we want to listen and get to know somebody, we don't care about the facts. Because see, the fact they per person who's looking to win the argument will say, you're, well, your meeting with your boss isn't this afternoon. It's, it's this evening. Why'd you lie? Oh, that's, that's not what this topic is about. Why aren't you listening to me? I'm not telling you about, what, right? Isn't that how fights, that's how all your fights end up. Because you're going to argue about the facts. Well, I thought you said it was during the day. Why is it at night? Who cares? I'm not here to argue the facts. I'm here to understand you and create an empathetic connection. And that's why I take notes about your feelings about the event that you're describing. All right. Number three, ignore their words, right? Focus on their feelings. Only 7% of all communication is words. 93% is tone, body language. So it's critically important. The best way to listen is with our eyes, fully engaged. 
What if I were like this as you were talking? Or grab some, yeah, uh-huh. Am I engaged with you? Am I listening to you? What's my body language say? And so then what would somebody start saying to you? You don't even care. Did I say that? No, but my body language says it. That's how most fights happen, is people read the body language. They read the unspoken positions of somebody, the tone of how they responded. So if somebody said, you don't even care, well, what do you mean I don't care? See, it's my delivery. It's not my words. That's what people are listening to. All right, that's what people don't understand. And this is why people's relationships blow up is they're listening to the words. I ignore, literally, when somebody talks to me, I don't, I don't listen to their words. Ignore all of it. All I'm listening for are their feelings and I'm watching their body language. I'm engaging with them emotionally. Because I don't know if you know this, but the written language they, they most likely believe was born out of song. All right, well, what's a song? Why do, you, why do you like music so much? What happens when you listen to a song? It creates a tremendous emotional reaction in you. Words are used just to try and communicate what we're feeling. Watch my videos. Watch how many times I repeat the exact same. Drives me insane. I'm telling you, when I edit my videos and then people's comments, would he just stop rambling and just get to it? Well, do you know why that is? I'm trying to communicate a feeling. That's all we're ever doing with communication, is we're trying to share what's in our heart, what we're feeling inside of us, and we're trying to put words to that. And that's why we want to ignore somebody's words, because they're trying to communicate their feelings. Because we feel before we ever think. That's how our brain and body works. So if we're not making our feelings the priority, we're not understanding people. We're not understanding ourselves. We're not communicating who we really are. The facts of the matter very rarely matter. What matters most is the emotional content that they're trying to get across. That's the real story. How many times have you sat with somebody and you said, you don't hear me. You're not under, and you're, because why? You're fighting over the facts. Now, in many cases, it's the person speaking isn't, a, they don't have emotional mastery. So they're not able to pick the words that communicate the feelings that they want to get across. And so there's a misunderstanding. Then this person is not listening to the, the feelings they're attempting to get across. They're listening to the facts. And now it becomes an argument over facts. Well, I thought you said this morning. No, I said last night. What's well, not about last night? Why won't you listen to me? Can't you see I'm upset? Well, what are you upset about? You did. See, they're fighting up here when the person is like, I, it's not, would you just, can't you hear I'm frustrated? Can't you hear I'm sad? Can't you hear I'm concerned? Can't you see and understand I feel helpless and hopeless? Now, are they saying that to you? Of course not because we don't have emotional mastery and people try and, and communicate with facts. When what we need to do is communicate with feelings because that's all we're ever doing. So our eyes are the greatest way we communicate and we wanna really do our best to engage and that moves us into step number four. Do your best to always look at their left eye. Like whenever I'm speaking to somebody, I'm always, I, both of my eyes, I look right at their left eye. There's a reason for that. The left eye taps into the emotional centers of our brain. You can do this. Do, if you're with a partner or even a friend, find some friend that doesn't think you're crazy, sit knee to knee and look and start off looking at each other from your right eye to right eye. And you'll be like, well, this isn't uncomfortable. The second you both switch to your left eye, you'll be like, whoa. Like you'll feel this massive shift of it feels incredibly vulnerable, especially like two guy friends do it. They'd be like, whoa. They totally, you know, especially guys, because most guys don't like to be emotional. The typical male, that's, I mean, I'm the atypical male. But the point is, is when we listen to people, you can do one of two things. If this person, if, if I run into people that are dangerous, I only look at their right eye. 
If I do not want to connect with people, I've had some clients come into the office that I knew were sociopaths and I did everything I could to make sure I didn't, because they're there to, to play a game with me. They're there to challenge me. They're not there to get help. And so one of my protection mechanisms is all the games that they play, I bore them to sleep, all right? So that they, there's no game for them. And the other thing that I do is I make darn sure I'm only using my right eye and looking at their right eye. I don't allow any emotional connection to happen at all. It's one of my defense mechanisms so that they don't hire me and so that I can get, through, you know, I can get through it without any incident as I, I know how to keep myself out of their trigger zones is probably the best way to say it. Okay. Cause that's what they're looking for is a therapist or coach that they can manipulate. And because I can pick up on that, I make darn sure I use my right eye. So for those of you professionally, you can do this with employees that are combative or bosses, whatever it may be, somebody in your office, we all have those people that we feel are dangerous, then protect yourself, go right eye to right eye. Now somebody you wanna connect with, go left eye to left eye. That's one thing I have my couples do is I do that need any exercise. And I have them start right eye and then switch to left eye. And I always walk in and they're in tears hugging each other. Like this, it creates this massive, like they don't even say anything. And there's just this tenderness that emanates from both of them. It's really magical to experience. All right, so number five. Now we've listened. Now how do we communicate? Well, remember we took notes. Now we're gonna mirror back those feelings with empathy. And again, the key is to focus on their emotional phrases, not the content, not the factual content. And so the responses are, wow, that sounds really hard, or you seem really sad, or I think I hear, you know, usually I'm like, so let me see if I understand you correctly. What I think I heard is you feel sad, you feel confused, you feel a bit frustrated, and I think powerless and helpless. Am I hearing you right? See, I didn't say anything about the, the meeting with the boss and what the coworker said and what your partner said, none of that, none of that matters. What matters is where is their heart? What is their heart trying to communicate? And they're like, yeah, that, no, that's exactly it. And I'm like, and I'm like, so is that it or is there more? Well, yeah, I also feel really frustrated, really powerless. Oh, okay, tell me more about the powerlessness. And they'll tell me a story that's mix, you know, mix of a story and emotions. And again, I'm taking notes on the emotions. Okay, so let me see if I heard you right. You feel powerless and, and they'll use, there'll be more emotions and I'll give them back those emotions. Okay, so is that it or is there more? Like I just keep doing that. Is that it or is there more? And eventually they'll go, no, I think that's it. And I'm like, okay. And then if you see my video on you know, the three rules to give advice, I talk about, okay, so what would you like to do about that? Now I empower them. Now I give them, they, they've just exposed their soul. They feel heard. They feel respected. They feel understood. This is the best way to bring somebody out of a childlike state into adulthood. And now I, I show them that I trust them, that I believe in them, that I think they're smart and they're capable by instead of telling them what to do, I phrase everything as a question. So what do you think you can do about that? What are your options? How will you handle it? Those are such big feelings. How do you think you'll handle all of that? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. Well, that sounds, what feeling would you, sound to me that sounds like you're a bit uncertain. You see, I didn't, I just, they said, I don't know what to do. I didn't tell them what to do. I focused on the emotion. So, well, so I think you're a little uncertain. So what do you tend to do when you're uncertain? Do you see? All I'm ever doing is focusing on their feelings. I'm looking for, even if they use a factual statement in their tone and body language is the emotion. So I picked up that they feel uncertain. They don't know what to do. Okay, because think of it, the tone changes. Well, I just don't know what to do. Ah, so you're uncertain. What do you do about that? Well, usually in the past I do this, but that never worked out too well. 
Okay, so have you ever heard anyone bring up other ideas that you might? Well, Joe said, do you hear that? Well, Joe said, oh, so you sound, sounds like that might be an option because you sound encouraged by that. Am I hearing that right? Yeah, that is kind of encouraging. See, I'm not even talking about what Joe said. I'm picking up on their tone. I'm picking up on their body language. That's what they're communicating. So the single greatest step in all of this is please start ignoring people's words. The story doesn't matter. What matters is the emotional content of what they're saying. And that's why text message, if you want to have any conversation with anybody, don't ever text message. It's a complete waste of time. There's absolutely no community, not no, that's too extreme. There's very little real communication happening in text message. And people wonder why they can't get a date or can't find someone to love them. It's because everyone's scared to death to get on the phone and actually have a real conversation because they don't have emotional mastery. This is what they're scared to death to do, to be available emotionally for somebody and connect with them. That's what is so horrible about text message is it's become this detached way and we're using the, what we're using to try and forge connection isn't even really communication. Only 7% is words. Do you see that? You're trying to close a business deal. You're trying to save a relationship. You're trying to have a relationship and build one deeper and you're using only 7%. If you're in a deep committed relationship or pursuing one, you should never be texting other than, yep, on my way. Like two second things. It, it's the death of true intimate connection text message in email. They should never be used. Should always be on the phone or in-person communication if you want advanced empathetic listening skills, okay? So, um, to learn more about that, I would suggest, because what we're talking about here is goes even much di deeper than listening skills. You have to be able to be present emotionally to do this. Well, that requires this, my book, Your Journey to Success. You need emotional mastery. And that lays out what keeps us from emotional mastery in the beginning stages to create it. The next thing I suggest is my Emotional Mastery Method master classes. Right now you can get the whole suite, all of it, which walks you through the whole process to be able to communicate. And I go in much more depth in the codependent section of how to communicate this way and how to listen this way for only $47 a month. You can get the complete skills and this is something you can bring into your work life, you can bring into your home life with your kids and your relationships, it'll transform the way you communicate and connect with other people. So I hope that helps you. And as I always say, enjoy the journey.